Hey everyone, I'm Boone. In today's episode of Monday Maps, I'm gonna show you how to use mats to help make your map animations in Adobe After Effects more interesting. More specifically, I'm gonna be adding both the flag and the coat of arms into this map of Belgium using mats. Check out all the links down in the video description because if you'd like to follow along with this tutorial, all the elements are available for free. Now, for the first step, we need to download all these assets, which include the flag of Belgium, the great coat of arms of Belgium, and the map of the country of Belgium. You can get both the flag and the great coat of arms of Belgium over on Belgium's Wikipedia page. I downloaded the map over at freevectormaps.com. This does require an attribution, but if you want to pay the very, very low license fee, which is usually about $2 per map, you can use it without attribution. And if you do happen to like maps and you want to download some other ones, you can buy the creator a coffee on his site. Very, very cool. Okay, I'm inside of Adobe After Effects now. I've brought all my elements inside. I've set up a comp here with a few different things. Here, I've set up a basic background. This is just a simple uh, screenshot of a Google map that I've blurred out. This is gonna help all the other elements hopefully pop out from the background. I have my flag of Belgium, and I have the great coat of arms of Belgium here as well. Now, when you download a map from freevectormaps.com, you get a bunch of different elements. So here you can see I have the license agreement document, I have the Adobe Illustrator file, I have a PNG, a JPEG. So what I need to do is just grab this Adobe Illustrator file and I can drag that straight into my After Effects project here. It's gonna bring up this dialog box that gives me a couple of different options on how I wanna specifically bring this in. This doesn't matter too much. I'm just gonna make sure I choose my individual Belgium layer. And again, make sure you apply the proper attribution if you don't pay for it. And I'm gonna click OK. That brings this in and I'm gonna drop this right at the top and then isolate it. Now this is a really teeny element. This is 720 by 540 in a 4K sequence. So let's scale this up. Now right away you're gonna see that it's looking all pixelated and that's because I need to click on this continually, continuously rasterize button. That'll give me those sharp edges. However, I wanna turn this into a shape layer. So that's gonna allow us to open up all the animator tools and all the, it just opens up a lot more versatility. So for this, I'm gonna right click on the layer, go to create, create shapes from vector layer. And now that turns that into the shape layer. I'm gonna delete that original layer. Now, one thing I have noticed about these maps from this website is that they usually come with a lot of vertices or points on the paths. So if you look down here, it just looks like there's a lot of unnecessary paths, which makes it a little more render intensive. It's just gonna sl overall slow down your computer and make the exports take a lot longer. So to fix this, I'm gonna go over to Illustrator and I'm gonna select the path here. And if I hold control, I can see how many of the points are here. Now if I go to Object and select Path, Simplify, I can uh, basically lower the number of points here. So I'm gonna click on this to bring up the whole Simplify dialog box to see what's going on. Right, it's showing us the original number of points, 901. It's auto-simplified this to 350. And I'm gonna bring it down to like 50% of that. And now if I hit Control, you can see there's still a lot, but not nearly as many. If I undo, you can see how many I got rid of. Now one other quick little pro tip I wanna show you is this extension called Overlord. So right over here, I've installed this premium plugin called Overlord. And if you do any work uh, where you're bringing basically assets or files between Adobe Illustrator and Adobe After Effects, this plugin really pays for itself. It's incredibly powerful. I can just push different pieces of vector layers or vector art from Illustrator straight to Adobe After Effects. So let me show you what I'm talking about. If I go over here to Adobe After Effects and let's just say I'm gonna delete this one that I already imported and created. And if I go back to Illustrator and I just grab this Belgian path here and click this little button, push selection to Adobe AE, you can see the little AE icon is blinking. And look at that, voila, it automatically created a shape layer. And all I gotta do now is scale that up and it automatically named it as well. So if you have even more intricate uh, layers, it will auto import them and you can have them um, basically put all, it'll rename all the groups or you can split those off into layers. You can have it automatically position the anchor point. It's a really powerful, really cool tool. So if you wanna learn more about it, follow my affiliate link down in the video description. And actually be sure to subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell, because coming up in the next tutorial, I'm probably gonna do a full review on this particular extension or plugin. Okay, so now I'm ready to do some compositing. I'm gonna grab this, put it in my graphics folder, and I'm gonna actually turn the opacity 
of my map background down because it's bright, it's quite bright and distracting. So let's turn that down to 35. And then I'm also going to shy that layer to keep it so we're not distracted on the timeline. Now I'm going to grab the map and drag it to the bottom. Um, this is going to be what we're going to be using our mat as. So we essentially want both uh, the flag and this to fit within the map and then have the edges of the map kind of cropping everything else out. So we're going to do that with track mats. Now, there are a few different ways you can use track mats inside of Adobe After Effects. One of the most popular being this track mat column here in the timeline panel. Now, the problem with this is that it applies the track mat to an adjacent layer, so you have to have those layers right next to each other, meaning that I would have to duplicate this Belgian map multiple times if I want to apply it to multiple layers. So for that reason, I'm going to be using the set mat effect. Let's go to effects and presets and go find set mat. And I'm going to be applying, well, first let's focus on the flag. So I'm going to turn the great coat of arms off and I'm going to grab the set mat effect and apply it to the flag of Belgium. Now up here in effect controls panel, you can see all of the different parameters here. I need to specify what layer we want to take the mat from. So I'm going to select the drop down menu here and we're going to select Belgium, which is our map. Now you can see something's happening here, but something is clearly wrong. It's not um, fitting correctly. The shape is kind of right, but it's all wonky. And that's because it it's basically stretching the mat to fit, which we don't want it to do that. So deselect that, and now everything's looking much, much better. But if I zoom in here, you can see, we can still see the edges of the original map, which that's one of the clear differences between the track mat in the timeline and the set mat effect. Set mat does not turn off the visibility of the track mat layer, whereas the track mat on the timeline does. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to be able to scale up the flag to fill, basically fill in the entire map. So let's see what we can do here. If I go to the flag layer, hit S for scale, and if I just start to scale this up, you're going to see we have another problem, and that is, is that our mat is scaling with it. Not the original mat layer, but the mat that we've applied to it. So I'm going to undo that. That has to do with render order. So basically the transformation properties are rendered in a specific order aside from the effects and mask. So what I need to do is I need to use an effect. So I'm gonna apply a transform effect and I'm gonna apply it to my flag of Belgium as well. However, I still need to worry about render order because if I put it below, you can see I just put it the effect here below set mat. Well, effects render order is from the top to bottom. So if I try to scale this up with this transform effect, the same thing is going to happen. So what I need to do is just drag this above the set mat effect. And now when I scale it up, you can see that I can control the flag separate of the set mat effect. Now let's apply a stroke. So if I want to have some kind of stroke element here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate our original Belgium and just call this Belgium stroke. Now I could just mess with the stroke up here, but it has a question mark, and that's because if I open this up, I think there's not a stroke animator in there. Yeah, you can see just the path and the fill. So if I go to add stroke, and actually um, this is looking fine. Let's actually turn off the fill, and the stroke was set to two. That's looking fine, but I'm gonna open up this stroke, and we wanna change the line join to round, so that'll make it a little bit we're smooth. Okay, so now we have the stroke. Okay, now I can take care of the coat of arms here. Now, one thing that can be a little wonky is that you need to reset the transformation properties before you apply the set mat. Otherwise, you can get some really weird results. So I'm going to reset that. That's all good to go. Now, one thing I could do is I could just go back to the flag of Belgium and simply copy these effects and paste them on the great coat of arms in here. Now, watch what happens when I paste them. You can see, well, it scaled it up a little bit, but it also applied that, and now it's place. It's in place. And if I adjust, once again, I need to adjust the transformation effect properties. So you can see that the composite is very much, you know, it's very much abiding or adhering to the edges of my map. Okay, so now we're ready to do some animation. But first, actually, you know what? I'm going to add a quick little stroke to the coat of arms. And for that, I'll use a layer style. So I'm going to select the layer. Go to layer, layer styles, and right down here I have stroke. And this is down in the timeline. Let's go open up stroke here. Simply change that to white and maybe bump it up just a little bit. Okay, now let's do a really quick down and dirty animation. First, I'm going to focus on the stroke. So 
For this, I'm going to add a trim paths animator. And I'll animate the end of this trim paths. And I'll bring the end at 100% to one second. And it will start at zero. So now it'll just kind of animate on like this. I'll grab this and add some easy ease and in the graph editor I'll put a little curve on it on the speed so that'll animate on nicely. So we want this flag to, to animate on as well and I want to have basically like a radial wipe and I'm actually going to create that from scratch so I'm going to go grab this ellipse tool and with a white fill only I'm going to create a quick ellipse just right here kind of in the middle of the map and let's make sure to transform center the anchor point uh, right in the middle of this. Let's see if it's still center here. Okay, so now I'm just gonna grab the scale and we're gonna animate the scale from zero to like very, very big. I wanna animate it definitely larger than the map so that it'll cover this. And I'm gonna be using this as a track mat for our map layer. Okay, so we're gonna add some easy ease here as well, as well as an animation curve. And let's see how this looks. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, what we need to do is we need to essentially assign this as a mat. So we're gonna call this flag uh, radial transition mat. And I'm gonna drag this above the flag of Belgium. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I wanna use my track mat column and I, these need to be adjacent. So now I'm gonna grab, well, let's turn the visibility off here. So we can see the, the red or, or the, the white ellipse. So with my flag of Belgium layer selected, I'm gonna to go to track mat and do alpha mat flag radial transition mat. And now that will serve as an animation in. But the problem is I got this nasty original layer, this one. Let's turn that one off. So we have transparency then. Okay, so we have this animating on and then our flag is revealed and as i said before look at that the the flag this track mat as soon as i set it to alpha it immediately turned off the visibility of this as a, of our mat layer pretty cool now i can focus on this uh, coat of arms for this we'll just do something simple and we'll go grab the transformation and let's add a position keyframe and then just have it kind of animate up like this. Now I'd like to spend a little more time doing some design tweaks, but you get the gist of it. This is a tutorial focusing on the compositing. You can see how we're able to use the map shape here and it'll, you know, stick all of our other elements within the map quickly and easily. Okay, so there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video about how to use mats with your maps. That's difficult to say. If you did like it, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you want to see more content like this, be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Like I said, next week, I'm going to be doing a full review on that Overlord plugin. Super, super cool. That'll be another map related video as well. And if you like maps, you want to check out more videos that are map related, go check out my Monday Maps playlist. All right, I'll see you in the next one.